through. The creepy, crawly blue Peter. Deep down in the studio jungle, it's a bug's life. When I go behind the scenes with my report from San Francisco on the making of this amazing new movie. And we'll come face to face with some living specimens when the really wild show's Nick Baker gives us the lowdown on them. Connie. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah, me scared. too. It's Silicon Valley, a whole area dedicated to the computer industry. So it's not surprising that San Francisco is also famous for its computer animation. Pixar is the company that created Toy Story. Now they're well into production with their second feature, but this time it's not toys, it's insects. I'm lost! Where's the line? It just went away. What do I do? We stuck here forever. Do not panic. Do not panic. We are trained professionals. Now stay calm. We are going around the leaf. Uh, around the leaf? I, I, I don't think we can do that. Oh, nonsense. This is nothing compared to the twig of 93. That's it. That's it. Good. You're doing great. There you go. There you go. Watch my eyes. Don't look away. And here's the line again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Soil. <laughs> Good job, everybody. A bug's life follows the adventures of a misfit ant named Flick, who tries to save his colony from a greedy gang of grasshoppers led by Hopper. Flick's attempts to become a hero seem to be heading for disaster when he enlists the help of a bunch of hopeless performers from the local flea circus. The film's director is John Lasseter, who created Toy Story. Now, John, you're the yes. big man, you're the head honcho of the whole thing. <laughs> so can I just say, wow, what an office. It's so cool. Oh, you like my office? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like toys. Yeah. So how did you get the idea for A Bug's Life? Were you looking at your toy collection? You thought, hey. Well, no, I was looking out in the garden. Mm -hmm. um, with our medium of computer animation, which we love, it has an inherent quality to make things more dimensional, yeah. kind of more realistic looking. Um, Toy Story was a natural for it. Insects are another natural for this medium. Yeah. And we started researching. We became kind of amateur entomologists, you know? Yeah. And we went out to the garden right outside, mm -hmm. you know, the, the office here, and stuck our head under plants and started looking around. And one of the things we saw that really inspired us was how beautifully translucent this world is. And the more we looked at plants, from an insect point of view, and insects themselves, you know, they are so beautiful and it lends itself to this medium so well. And I think that, that it's a real universal subject matter too. I mean, kids all over the world and people all over the world are familiar with insects. Mm. You know, you love them, you hate them, yeah. you know, you find them interesting. But it is also a magical world when you get down to that level. Wow, city. Septic tank, including standing water, empty bean pad, and uh, rat watches. Now, this is the working environment of the animators, and it's hard to describe exactly what is all around me, but there's all sorts of knickknacks and little bits and pieces that tell me I'm surrounded by some truly creative people in a truly creative environment. They've all got mirrors by the sides of their desks so that they can pull different faces and try out expressions for their characters. It's coming towards the end of production now, so there's a very sort of intense yet exciting atmosphere in the air. I'm getting very good vibes. Glenn McQueen is the supervising animator. You start with a drawing, mm -hmm. then you go from a drawing to a sculpture, a lot like these. You make a model. Yeah, exactly. And that lets the director see what these critters look like from any angle. He can look at them from below and he can look at them from above. Yeah which is really important because in the computer you can put the camera anywhere you want around the characters, just like a live action movie. So for example, you'd get a shot where Flick, the, the hero ant, maybe he's explaining something to the circus characters and saying, no, 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 you, you guys can't leave. So what the animator will get is a, a shot on his computer with all the characters standing there stock still and the soundtrack of Flick saying, no, 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 you can't leave, you can't leave. 
And so he'll listen to it again and again and again. No, 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 you can't leave. And he'll act it out in his cube where we have a, we have a room that's completely surrounded with mirrors, with video cameras, so yeah. you can tape yourself performing. You? No, what? Because really what you're doing is you're, you're trying to make a bridge between what the directors want and what the actors have given you in the soundtrack. Where's my food? Isn't it up there? What? The food was in a leaf sitting on Excuse top. me? Are you sure it's not up there? Are you saying I'm stupid? No. Do I look stupid to you? Let's just think about the logic, shall we? Let's just think about it for a second. If it was up there, would I be coming down here to your level looking for it? Hey, cutie, want to pollinate with a real bug? <laughs> and they Story supervisor and Joe Ramps gave me a preview of the plot. It's on this sort of nice, dainty act and goes right over to them. And then right when he gets up to them, his face changes. So, being a ladybug automatically makes me a girl. Is that it, fly boy? Cripe, she's a guy. And then Heimlich says, Francis, leave them alone. They have poopoo -poo hands. And PT's all frustrated. Oh, no, not again. He hops out. And then Francis yells, judging by your breath, you must have been buzzing around a dung heap all day. So, being a ladybug automatically makes me a girl. Is that it, Flyboy? Huh? Yikes! She's a guy! Francis, leave them alone. They have poo, poo hands! Not again. Judging by your breath, you must have been buzzing around a dung heap all day. This process of storyboarding, this is how we begin making the film. You know, a script's written, and then we start drawing it up on panels like this. Right pinning it up to these boards and showing it to each other. It's like a giant comic strip. <laughs> yes, exactly. Most storyboard people are kind of poor man's animators. Maybe they wouldn't be the greatest animators, yeah. but they're into ideas and would like to do stuff that what animators would go, give me that, I want to animate it. You know? Right. So because as you're actually going through the story, doesn't that make you want to change certain characters and, and so on, but it's not in your job? No, we well, change them a lot. Really? Yeah, we cut characters out, we add characters, we say, hey, well, like one guy said, we had this caterpillar character, Heimlich, and yeah. a guy said, what if he had a German accent? And then I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> and I started doing this German guy. And uh, he ended up, I ended up being cast as the character in the well, film. So your voice is actually... Yeah. Heimlich's I'm the voice of this voice. guy, Heimlich. I hate performing on an empty stomach. Do your act, Heimlich, then you can eat. Wow. Moving. Whoa. Hey, waiters, I'm in my suit. I've been working out. Feel my weight. Yo, two black flags over here. <laughs> the hair of the dog, you bit. Hey, who wanted the poo poo platter? <laughs> oh, I love that guy, you know, sort of practicing in front of the mirror. No, it looks a bit Mad weird. Mad but effective, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, on Wednesday's Blue Peter, we're going to be chatting to the director of A Bug's Life in the studio. And the movie opens around the country on Friday. And you've got to check out the graphics because they are amazing. Well, now you know what the movie is about. Let's find out what happens in real life. Because here to tell us more is Nick Baker and Bug Keeney's Stevie Ashton and Scott Wilson. And they today have brought along some of their friends, including this massive stick insect, which is making its way up my arm. Nick, Blue. is it really true that in the movie that the, that the sort of locusts and the grasshoppers rule the ants? Well, it is a bug-eat-bug -bug world out there, yes, but not necessarily that way around. I mean, the ants are actually the... Uh, they're going to be the more successful hunters. They're more likely to pick up a, a grasshopper than the other way around. And as this insect makes its way right behind <laughs> my are. neck, these ants are huge. Where do they come from? This is about as big as an ant's going to get. These are dinosaur ants, or bully ants, and they're from South and Central America. Now, one of the reasons they're called bully ants is because apparently when they sting you, it can be like being shot. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate that right now, but they are fantastic. These have been uh, brought down from Sheffield University. Now, um, even though we all know what ants are, we know very little about how they live and what they do in the colony. And this little guy, as you might notice, has a number he's, stuck to his back. He's and big that's enough for a number. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how the researchers can tell what his role is in the colony. That's amazing. He's fantastic. In the film, the stick insect is a comic. What's the point of going out there? They'll only laugh at me. That's because you're a clown! Out of it, you and your husband. While the praying mantis is a dramatic magician. Yet again, it is up to me to rescue the performers. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's just a movie, but are stick insects and praying mantises really like they're shown in the film? Um, 
I wouldn't say they were clowns. I mean, they're certainly masters of disguise. I mean, this guy, okay, stands out like a sore thumb on your thumb, but uh, <laughs> in the wild, if it was on a green bush, especially a thorny one, you would not know it's there. And another classic example, if I can find <laughs> it. Where's he gone? Uh, he was there earlier. There he is there. He's doing a brilliant impression of a, of a twig on a twig. And uh, there's, there's something like 2,000, 3,000 different species of stick insect, all doing very different jobs. Now, the praying mantis in the film is probably the most realistic insect of the lot. It's very human. It's uh, very well turned out. So, um, a bit of a thespian. Yes, a, a real actor. And uh, praying mantids really are like that in real life. They're very well groomed. They clean themselves. They're like cats in a way. <laughs>